All right, so now with two hands, back up along these poles and don't hit them. Now just start backing up. Look up at the top of the tree. Now what you want to focus on is the nose, the third vertebrae, and the withers. The withers are correct. The nose is out. So lower your hands. If your hands go past your saddle, see how the nose came in? Is that a quarter horn? If your yeah. hands go past the saddle horn, they're too long. So shorten your reins. Now unless you want to be a reiner, you got to get the hump out of your back. Because then you're centered, see? There. Kind of a soft eyed little horse. Okay, so what you've proven to yourself is that when you ride two handed, you're more accurate than one handed. Which simply means your horse isn't there. Okay, you roll, right? No kidding. Goodbye. An unangry horse. <laughs> <laughs> you throw a rope down a well. All right, then you rope. But remember, the whole thing in this riding is so that you can rope cattle. We need you. Okay? <laughs> so when you ride one-handed, you can't have your horse doing this because you betray him. Every time you have a tight rope and your horse steps here, you just pulled on the right shoulder. Now you pulled on the left shoulder. Now the horse is going to quit. So they have to back straight. That's why this is so important. So the first thing you know is that you need, you're not one-handed yet. You need a bigger bubble. All right, now understand that with your hand straight down, did you bring one? The nose. Okay. Well, I've got with your hand actual. as high as the saddle horn. I brought my actual coat. It's the third version. My hiking coat with the puppy stuff. With your hand higher, it's the withers. One. My two, other coat takes up three. so much space. It's so in the training world, what you're doing okay. is you have to do three, one, like one, two, three, two, um, one, oil. whatever it takes. Oil. Yeah. But you're simply going up and down. You're not doing this. That's why you teach them walking backwards. Get it? You don't have to do all this stuff. So now you back up and pick the number. Say it out loud. Where you? What number do you need to be on? Okay, stop. Is there a Rainer Association around here? As you may know. If you don't sit up, you're putting the weight over the forehand. Get it? It's not fair to the horse. Yeah, we saw that. I know you're old, but that dang. All right, back up. There, sit up, look at the top of the tree. Lower your hand. You got to feel it. You can't see it. Okay, now the horse is almost behind the bit. That means you pulled too hard. All right, stop. You've got the, you've got it. You know how to do it. You just need to need to hear how to do it. So in the morning on a normal day. You look at the ground, and on the west side of your horse in the morning, there's a mirror. That's the shadow. In the evening, it's the opposite. It took me years to sort that out. The point is, you can look at the ground and learn footfall. All right, so one more time. Come up here. I can see my shadow this way. All right, stop. No. All right, now let me show you why you back up to teach collection. Stay right there. If you'll notice, to back up, he didn't hardly have to pull at all. The horse is nice and light. Now, I want you to walk forward and put the horse in collection while you walk. Go ahead and go. Okay, if you notice you got to pull harder, that's why you back up. The horse can only take so many pulls on their mouth when they're pitching. Now, in the, in the bridal horse world, this is the, it should be this way. See the V? Yeah, yeah. But there's too much weight here, so you're losing part of the feel. Yeah. Now, this is really nitpicking, I'm telling you, but the fact is, I'm critiquing everybody's gear. Now, just so you know, this braiding, there's South America and North America. When the sailors got on the ship in Spain to come to America, they were sailors. They worked on the ship, it was a wooden ship. When they got to America, they were mercenaries. They called them conquistadors, but it means they're mercenaries. The more you kill, the more gold you get, it's yours. So they killed everybody. Now, hundreds of years later, they come to California, and they had turned into cowboys, vaqueros, over that time period, because they pretty much killed everybody off. They started getting all these cattle going. So the first thing they were were mariners. That's where the knots come from. The sailors knew all these knots. And so they put them on the Ramal Reigns. And to, to, to tell you the deal, the, 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 the knots should be here. Yeah. Not here. 
but this gave him the weight that he wanted but theoretically they should be up here two reasons a lot of them canal in fact said that it was a signal i believe they're there because they keep the sweat from going into the main rain when they're really sweaty because the salt's hard on rawhide and you treat rawhide with kidney fat up in the carcass you guys butcher every week or something just look up in there snow white fat that's what you put on rawhide anyway these are cool looking but they're not they're not functional as far as the bridal horse goes all right now this is a santa barbara cheek is this a half breed or spade okay <clears throat> yeah because here's the trivia you guys watch because of the weight of this rain, see how the bit came back? Yeah. Just the weight of the rain alone is holding the cheek back. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. So this needs to go on the wall. Yeah. Can you see that? It makes a difference. Remember, I'm nitpicking, but I don't care. That's why I'm here. Can so you show that? You, can you what? show that from that angle? Right. The, just the, the, the weight of the rain is moving the cheek back. Okay. Got if it. The, if the weight wasn't there, the cheek would come back to full. I see. That's why the spoons, you guys. That's why the pendulum mentality. Because the way the spoon... I want to see the angle of the spoon. Um, the angle of the spoon dictates the horse. That's a half-breed, though, right? I see. That's right. It's a half-breed. But the, Okay. So just remember, the cheek is being misplaced. Yeah. That's something you need to change. Yeah. It's always in the back position. All right. Now, I need you to back your horse up. Yeah. Now, you chose the bass oxbows. Do those come with the saddle? No, I ordered these. On purpose? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> right away, you know, I, I fly pedals when things pass, so I chuck them on. So do I. I fly less pedals. When they butt, I'm gone. Yeah. I never made it to butt. But, uh, bam. This really well, the, you know what those are? They're called concussion stirrups. Because when they hit you, you get a concussion. Right on the end of that. Uh, oh, not the kneecap. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy your stirrups. But we ride the flat manels because your foot's on the floor that way. It's flat. It's easier on your back. All right, back your horse up. Here's another one, you guys. You've done a great job. <laughs> All right, stop. What's the number one thing that you're having hell with? Um, well, just a um, lot of bits for my stop. Oh, yeah. now that you're not a good idiot. Oh, well, yeah, I, you, I, don't, okay. I don't know how good on it. Just, um, I, I just want to get them going just a little bit more responsive. Like, yeah. Takes takes me a long time to get them get them tracking around as in pick the life up in him yeah 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 okay and he's a he's the stock horse or? yeah he's a stock horse believe me he's not this dopey all the time well he's got the bone i love this australian stock horse the horses in switzerland their own horse looks like these he's at the point in his deal where this is where we need to find out exactly where he's at so if you, this is for the humans folks this is the rubik's cube you got to know how far to go so you don't hit a pole. Turn your right toe out farther. Out, like a bull rider. There. That's why I call it a Rubik's Cube. Does anybody notice what I just noticed? Yes. Notice how quiet I you was? You did it wrong. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's okay. All right. We're all going to join hands to help you. Yeah. Whatever's pointed in goes through the hole first. Yeah, right. I so just go on. Don't go back. Believe me, you don't have that much time. Hind quarter. All right, now the forehand's going to go through the hole. Yeah. Now watch his left hand. Watch the left hind foot. Uh -huh. no, no, no. Other way, other way, other way. You keep going in the same direction. Now you know why I picked you. How long have you been here? Ah, the palms have been, the palms have been like that, yeah, yeah. Well, like the last two years. Set up, like this. Huh? Well, I haven't been there once. Oh, really? Oh, no. 
<laughs> now we can move the poles if it would help. <laughs> Just move the pole underneath the horse if you might. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the horse is very patient. It is a good horse. Yeah, he's I'm not behind me a wall. Ah, right, Steve. Right. Nice to meet you. He's not going to dump you on your head, is he? Oh, really? <laughs> good thing you showed up. He could clean you out. Now it's going to be the hind quarter. He can't stop, can't touch a log. This is about people, folks. And then keep going that direction. There you go. Whenever you set these up at home, they have to be different distances in between. Don't get all anal and shoot them in the transit. Just roll them out there. Kind of getting on a roll now. You saw it, right? Right. You're right about the life of a horse. Let me show you something you need to get done. Yeah. Now, this horse don't buck. Hardly. Sometimes. <laughs> Let's see. We're starting the cold starting in a half hour. Yeah. Why are you getting on him? Hell no, I ain't getting on him. <laughs> Here's what you got to do. To get the life in this horse, you're going to have to walk backwards. We're going to have to lope forward yeah. from the backup. Try it out. <laughs> clear so path, to... clear path. <laughs> Back up about 20 feet and get him backing. Holy yeah, mackerel, yeah. nod your head, cowboy. Everybody clears away. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Okay, now, should I use the word canter? Sorry. <laughs> that was a trot. Yeah. That's kind of the point here. Do it again. Get him back up nice and strong. The horse is, needs to pick up its life. Get it back up to get propulsion. See, and then you just rock back and take off. There, there you go. go. There you go. Woohoo! You have to make contact with your horse. Okay. The contact is no longer going to be this. It's going to be this. A lot of people learn. The difference between a snap and a hackle. All right, now. I want you to pretend like that's a snap and turn the horse's head to the left. Right, now what happens is that the rein in her right hand is making contact whether she knows it or not. Let me show you what really happens. When you do this, you're turning the hackamore this way. And you open your hand wide. When you do this, you're simply lifting with one hand, and that's why they turn their head. That's the difference between a snapple and a hackamore. If anybody's curious how this is supposed to look. Because we never, ever try to tie a horse by a hackamore. You have to. If I had to leave Isn't a horse it cool how your seat bones twist in the saddle to every possible position? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's everywhere. Then you do what with it. Is anybody doing intensive grazing here? Grazing yeah. cell, mob grazing? There's not a lot of people going into it. This looks like a good country for it. For 45 days, I got three pounds a day on my steers. 45 days in a row. Since this is what it is. If, you're sli if the slits in your deal is too long, just tie a square knot. Okay. This is the flat horse, which means the back is flat. So I need to get the horse to raise its back to listen to my seat bones. And as you can probably notice, I'm picking up the life in the horse. I'm getting more life in it. Now this horse, in a little bit, is going to get cranky. 
because I'm asking more than she does. Where is she? Don't move. I can't look for you all the time, okay? In other words, I ask more than you do. So I can see them. Now, I'm going to just ask. I'm not going to pull. There's still a bend in the neck, but the fact is the horse listens. Right front. Right. Thank you. Now, my dear, the, the reason why I'm here and you're there, because you are at a point to quit using your hands so much and use your skeleton. That's the bottom line. Wendell, I'm sitting like a rainer. <laughs> All right. You're cocked out. I'm going to tell this horse it's time to walk backwards. And watch my right knee. I'm going to put my leg on the horse. I just did. I'm going to take my leg off the horse. Horse walks backwards. I'm going to put my leg on. Okay, there is no collection. But the horse is listening to my skeleton. The horse has to get round. When you push, it pushes against you. So I'll go in my arena and I'll drop this rein because I don't want to confuse the horse. I'll get the impulsion going and I'll ask the horse to get round. And what you got to notice is you're not going to see this. You're only going to see this. It's a hackamore. Now the hardest part of today in the two-hand riding is the shifting of the weight to the hindquarters so that the horse can turn around. Now I'm turning around right now in a circle, but I'm going to pick up the the lead the hackmore. When I get over there, I've got the horse bent now like a banana. Now I'll exhale, pull back, and ask the horse to step across. Okay, they have to step across. Bueno? All right. As he comes around, you'll be able to see. I have no banana. He's not, he's not bit like he's supposed to. I'm pushing on the inside with my spur. There. I'm pushing on the inside. My outside leg is for impulsion right now. In other words, keep moving. Now, I'm going to shift the weight to the hindquarter. Raise my hand <coughs> and step him across. Okay, that's clean. Now I tell him, that's clean. So you're going back to A. And please understand, everybody, everybody's already done a good job. We wouldn't have a bridal horse clinic if you hadn't done it. It'd be what's called a no clinic. It <laughs> doesn't matter. The point is, this is here. I want you to refine it. So now... I'm going to try to explain to this horse through my skeleton what it is that I want. Don't be hesitant. You're fine. So I'll sit up as high as I can, and then I'll just sit down. Now I'll back up, and I'll ask to the right. I'm asking. Here goes my foot. See my foot? I'm not allowing forward. Now I'll take off again. You're fine. I'm giving you the head. Don't worry about it. You notice I'm not talking about collection. I'm trying to get to the feet, and then I can get the collection. So now I'm going to come by you, and as I come by you, I'm going to ask forward now instead of backwards for this horse to gather up. I pull. It thinks it needs to go backwards. I'm pecking at it with my spur, telling it you need to go forward. Now, as I raise higher in the saddle... The horse starts to bridle up. You're fine. Don't worry about it. It's hesitant because it doesn't understand what I want. So I give it the rein. I say forward. Don't worry. Now, my conversation. I'm going to go to my right, and I don't want to move my hands. Now, 
I'm going to go to my left, which is the opposite of the gate, incidentally. So that's a leg here, but it isn't exactly what I wanted. See the brace? So I'm going to just pick up the rib cage and then ask for the left. Now, alternate your ears and get over yourself. You'll be fine. And incidentally, I started to talk about that. He's moving his mouth and all that stuff. Okay, when a horse moves their mouth, I'll work with you. They're, they're feeling better. If their tongue comes out the end of their skull, it's nerves, period. They're nervous. That's what it means. It doesn't mean, oh, my God, he's doing great. Now, you need to check in. You're going to have to build up the idea of this horse going into collection. There. Yield. The problem if you learned how to write English is that it's hard for you to change your body because you're yelled at in German about how you got to stay in this one thing. Watch my right toe. Left toe. All right, now I'm able to talk with my calf instead of my spur. Now my spur to keep this impulsion going. This horse is unsure, so it's always shutting down. Rolling the calf. No spur. Noble try. Left shoulder. Rolling the calf. This is that stuck to the left thing. So I bump the eye till I get the eye. That's a brace, incidentally. I want you to see that. Watch. The brace is right here. I have to have the eye, so I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Boom. Which, incidentally, a one rein stop. We all know what it is. That's what I did in the halter on that horse this morning. What I learned over the years is that we were taught to grab a hold of them and hold tight until they quit walking in a circle. What I learned is that if I did that, they would lean on the halter of the hackamore whatever I was riding. So what I did learn was to do a one rein stop by check, release, reach back, disengage the hindquarter. And see me giving the rein back? That helped me keep my horses lighter. Now, that bow in the neck, there, there's the, the brace is gone. Another way to train a horse, you put the right hind foot as close to the pole as you can. Now when you ask to turn, it can't blow its foot out. It'll run into the pole. All this stuff is legal. It's stuff that, it's, it's an aid. Later on, you won't need it. So now I got to do that. Big deal for this horse for me is the upward and downward transition. In other words, I'm going to trot, jog, and walk and stop. So I'm going to look where I want to go, get out of the herd, and let him get moving. You don't need to do that. Sorry you ran into my hand. I feel terrible. Pay attention. <laughs> now I'm giving and taking quarter inch increments. When I come around the corner, I'm going to slow the gate down. Not yet. You anticipate me. Now I'll slow it down. And I'll stop. And walk backwards. See where my hand is? It did not have to move the, leave the main. Now, this is a horse losing its mind. It's not going to buck. It ain't nothing. Couldn't buck its blanket off. But you see, if you watch it, you're going to see it starting to think it can't handle this. I'll exhale. Pick up the energy. Pick it up. You're fine. You can, you can jog or trot without getting all bothered. Right, calf? I need to walk. 
Thank you so much. If you would, please stop. Now walk backwards. All right, what's your favorite horse? Starbird. Well, listen to you. Closest to heaven you'll ever get. <laughs> Sweet Pope Sound and the Red Horse. Woo -hoo! My cowboy down the ranch was all thoroughbreds. Loved it. When they turned four, it finally dawned on them what a cow was. Okay. Well, I can see the difference with this bit. Now, this is the sleeper, you guys. This is the sleeper. In front. Now, to get a horse to step in front instead of behind, you're going to have to release a little bit more. So you do an S. Third. Turn. Turn. Yes. Pull back. Oh, you can hear the sound of them hitting the wrong corner that band with a cannon boom. That means the next time they'll pay attention. Yeah. Now, what you've got here is the nothing in the middle. You've got some air in front of them, but there's two stiff in here. So that has to be rounded out. Okay, that's the two ends. Well, he breaks the pole really well with none of the wither. That's right. And what the problem I've got is that he's not flexible this way. Yeah. In the middle right of his body. Here. Huh? In the middle of his body, right? Not yeah. the middle of his neck. Yeah. And the way to fix that is what I'm about to do. So, once again, because the way he's designed, there's not a lot of lateral flexion. So I get to spend a lot of time doing this. And if you were able to <laughs> draw a circle on the ground, you would make the feet track right in the circle. And tomorrow could be something else. But right now what I'm feeling is a lack of flexion in the ribs. Okay, so when I get the flexion, which is now, I need the horse to listen to my body. So my left shoulder is going to lift and say, you need to move. There. I'm trying to get him more supple. Inside leg, pushing the rib out. Inside leg, getting him around. Inside leg. Another way of doing it is let them stumble on their own poles. You can take these poles and roll them in. In fact, I need a volunteer from the audience. Roll these poles in until they're almost touching each other. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Now, for what it's worth, these poles, you can roll them out 20 feet in rope circles. Okay, people that rope down horses like cutters, they rope them until they're brain dead. And then the trainer actually gets on, rides a few minutes, and they get another one. That's how they ride so many in a day. And they got kids loping, loping. And they're brain dead. And they stop just long enough to inject the hawks. Okay. You can make these poles go way out there to teach them the correct lead in a circle. 
And then the next day, roll them in three feet. You can start working it in where your horse starts doing whatever you want. I like to call this my portable arena. Probably. So here's a horse got to get round or step on the pole. It's your call, partner. Now I don't have to pull his head so much. I'm going to try to stop him with his right hind against the pole. I want him to start stepping across. Right there. Now. I'm trying, you see what I'm trying to get done? And once you get in there, you feel like there's anything good happening, then you do what's called a half halt. You don't come to the big stop. <coughs> you don't like going into these poles. You gotta bend yourself, horse. I'm not gonna do it. There. Move out of my way. How's it going? It just now dawned on him there's somebody up here. You see what the hind feet are doing? He's not supposed to be moving them around. So your job is to get your horse rounder. That's the problem. You've got a lot of things going on. You know, it's good, but this is reach. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, Yes. Yeah, his rib cage is stiff, and that's why he wasn't crossing over. Now he's starting to reach across. Remember, these are genetically set up to pull really heavy wagons because there's not a whole lot of this going on in the wagon world. They're not being smart. I'm just saying where they came from. They're beautiful in a six-up hitch. Try to stop that right hind foot as close to the pole as you can. You have your own way. I'm, I'm, I'm connecting with the spur pretty good on purpose. So now, and the reason, so we're clear, the reason why I connect with the spur, not breaking the rib, but connecting pretty hard, is so that when I turn my calf, they'll know it's coming. And they'll respect my leg more. That's what it's about. I don't want to use a spur. Now, now reach. Reach. Thank you so much. How's it going? Where's the call? Like a three-legged turtle in a car barrel. Okay, here we go. Where were we? Now the horse just woke up. Oh my god. Hello. Oh yeah. Now we're getting there. Do I look like Zoro? No. <laughs> Once the white, I'm clear. <laughs> now the half hold. Exhale. Shoulder. Reach. That's what your that's what your homework is. Now this is a very interesting horse. Oh. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> now in the two lane world, if you guys have a Ramal and you want to not use it, watch. That's how you rig it up. That way your rein stays in the center. Boy, this is nice. Well, you know, this reminds me of a pickup horse for like the radio. He's that type of horse. You got the guts to just run right into the shoulder of another one. He's done it. He's done a little bit of it. I believe it. This, he's got it written all over him. He reminds me of Grasshopper. Really? Well, in his appearance. No, this is a powerhouse. How's it going? Good job. <laughs> you know what the Bible says, rather thee than me. <laughs> Where does it say that? Uh, John 74, 16. <laughs> Everybody knows that. <laughs> you just turn around. There you go.
Okay, now tell me the number one thing if there's something that you're wanting to get better. What's something that you want to get better on this horse? Well, I know you might find it hard to believe again, but sometimes we get cracked down a bit. Like, we're going to reverse the horse. It gets high. It gets a bit high. Like, I've been working on it heaps. He's starting to settle and probably riding a little bit better than I was five years ago, too. Yeah, okay. The, uh, All right. That's what I wanted to know. To be honest, I can't say the best one I got. <laughs> <laughs> At least you brought your best one. You'd be surprised what people Why well, everybody else did. <laughs> <laughs> That's humor. Oh, man. Woo-hoo! How you doing, partner? Holy cow, boy, you want to know Harriet? Harriet's handy with the lariat. Come on, Harriet. But Harriet don't want to marry it. Because she's having too much fun. <laughs> Yeah, this curb step, I think it's about right. It feels good to me. Now tell me, is it stretching again? Is it going behind past the 30 degrees or is it all right? Oh, uh, it looks like it's going back to work. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. You? Because before it was down there, turned all the way over. It's amazing how many people think a loose curb strap is how you have a light horse. It's not how it works. Now, downward transition through the spine is one of the things you can offer this horse if it gets high. And I know it's cheap talking here, but I'll just do it anyway. When I come around there, I'm going to offer it to him. I'm looking. Now I'll be. That brought him down to walk without pulling. That's something you want to start thinking about. Just turn. There you go. So now I'll just ask and slow it down. Now I'll do the schooling walk. And then we'll take off again. So your skeleton needs to learn this. You haven't been doing this. I'm going to sit up and look at the deal and I'll... Stop. Back. That's how sudden it can be. Yeah. There's still two crash and burn. You, you better cross that line into subtle. Because, man, you're mounted. You're mounted really well. Now, as of now, because we've done this all day long, is there anybody that doesn't understand how I slow a horse down with my breathing? It's obvious, right? Stevie Wonder could do it. Okay. It's important to take home with you. If anything you take with you, it's about your breathing and the muscles on either side of your spine. You just simply relax, lean, ask, and ask. Do you think, too, with the shorter stirrups, maybe there's always a little tension? Well, if you when rides- you have short stirrups, you've got to be pushing on something. That's all there is to it. But the longer the stirrup, the more leg on the horse. But I'll, I'll say it for the seventh time. I didn't do this. The stuff that you're seeing that's good, it's already here. I did not train this horse. I've been annoying for five minutes. What everybody comes here for is to watch me do it and then take it with it and go home. Because you know now that you've been over the dash doing a job and played the da 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 That's all wonderful. But now put some finesse on it. Because you you can get this done. I mean, it's, and that's what makes it fun to me. So you're going to get rid of these Queen Mary dock and reins. 
and get some new ones. The bridle now is correct. You can buy a two buckle curb strap, punch holes in between each hole, and um, call me in the morning. Mm -hmm.